Welcome to The Know, I'm Mika Burton. We've got the tiniest bit of specific information about how the SNES Classic stock might differ from its younger brother, the NES Classic. According to French outlet Nintendo Home, Nintendo has allotted 160,000 SNES Classics to France on day one. For a little bit of context, Nintendo set aside just 84,000 NES Classics for France total for the entirety of its run. So that means that by the first day of launch in France, they'll have access to double the units that the NES Classic got from launch day until it was discontinued. The big question is, will that be enough and how quickly will Nintendo cancel it? At the moment, all the pre-orders are already sold out in Europe, but hey, this might be at least a tiny bit of positive news for those hoping to get one if those numbers stay consistent with supply around the world. One of the biggest missing features of the Nintendo Switch might be getting addressed according to a recent leak of the console's SDK. The leak SDK appeared on 4chan this week, which has led people to dissecting it for secrets, and one of the users on NeoGAF thinks that they found some revelations about a couple of possible upcoming features. Those leaked features include the ability to log in as a guest on a friend's Switch to bring an online character over without creating an account on their system, but more importantly, the ability to transfer save data between Switch consoles. No word on when we can maybe expect a feature like this to drop, but for now, we'll just be happy that Nintendo listened to us at least just this one time. The long-awaited Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy finally drops tomorrow, and reviews are already out ahead of Crash's retro remake. At the time of writing, Crash is holding an 81 on Metacritic with around 27 reviews and an 80 on OpenCritic. From the more notable outlets, it received scores like 4.5 and 3.5 out of 5 stars from Attack of the Fanboy and GamesRadar, a 90 out of 100 on GamesBeat, 8.5 out of 10 from IGN and Destructoid, 8 out of 10 from Game Informer, and 6 out of 10 from GameSpot. The general consensus is that the game is beautifully and faithfully remade from the originals, but the controls leave a whole lot to be desired. In its 8.5 out of 10 review, Critical Hit writes, More than 20 years after the manic marsupial first graced the PlayStation, the return of Crash Bandicoot isn't just welcome, it feels right. A throwback to a more positive time, Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy is a testament to timeless game design and an example of a remaster done right by two studios split across two eras. In some other Crash Bandicoot news, it looks like we have even more confusion about whether or not it's a true exclusive to PlayStation 4, a detail that Sony has had some very creative and mixed messaging about for the last several months. However, we might have more definitive proof that Crash will be banned of scooting onto other platforms, judging by one retail listing spotted this morning. Hungarian retailer Supergamer this week featured a product page of an Xbox One version of the Insane Trilogy dated for later this year. That's hardly official confirmation, but it does match up with some of the conflicting reports out of Sony. If you want to play it sooner though, it's out literally tomorrow for PlayStation 4, so get to band of scooting, everybody. If you were hoping for an easy PS4 Platinum Trophy to boost your digital collection, it looks like you've missed your opportunity. Five Star 1000 Top Rated, yes, that's the game's actual name, it's literally like star icons, pumped itself up as the system's fastest Platinum Trophy, which could be earned in 20 minutes for the low, low price of just 98 cents on the PlayStation Store. However, it looks like Sony has shut down that shameless attempt at a cash grab and pulled it from their network. The game's creator wrote on Facebook, Hi everyone, Sony has pulled the game temporarily and asked me to change the game's name and not mention trophies in the store trailer. I am happy to comply. So that's one less exclusive for Sony, Xbox is catching up to you. The creator of Rust is giving gamers an inside look about just how often the game is refunded by players and it's not a pretty sight. Gary Newman shared on Twitter that Rust has received more than 329,000 refund requests, amounting to about $4.3 million lost by the company. Newman's not really complaining though, he adds that most of the refunds are requested because players didn't find the game fun, which he described as pretty fair. That number might sound like a ton, but it's actually around 6% of total sales according to a statement that he gave to PC Game N. So either players just didn't find it fun, or they were really unhappy with their assigned player penises. It's no secret that EVE Online fans are a little mad these days. Some have been annoyed after the game went free to play and others don't like the game's new balance changes. Well, one fan decided to take matters into his own hands by sending one of the game designers a literal bag of dicks. The designer Brendan Hooper posted about it on Reddit after he was summoned to the custom office in Iceland to pick up a package that contained two candy gummy bags in the shape of penises, glitter, penis-shaped confetti, and a coupon that says, eat a bag of dicks. 
If you're wondering, Hooper told them to throw the dicks away. But yeah, don't mess with gamers or they'll spend 38 bucks just to make a point. But come on, like gummy penises could have been yummy. It could have been a snack. I think it was a wasted opportunity. Is Spider-Man going to show up in the Venom spin-off movie? Can we finally answer this question once and for all? Well, Sony has hinted in the past that Spidey might make an appearance in the Venom movie, but Marvel boss Kevin Feige squashed those rumors like a bug when he was asked about it by Variety. He said, no, I think the folks there are making a great Venom movie and I don't know much about it, but I know they're off to a good start with Tom Hardy. Venom stars Hardy in the leading role and will be the first spin-off movie of Sony's own kind of separate Spider-Man universe. It's expected to release next year. A KFC sandwich is going where no sandwich has gone before. To space. Yes, the fried chicken sandwich launched into space this morning via a giant balloon and it will float in the upper atmosphere for a few days before coming back to Earth. What? The stunt is being done by a high altitude balloon company called Worldwide Enterprises, whose balloon is designed to surf the upper atmosphere winds about 100,000 feet in the air. The balloon theoretically can stay in the stratosphere for months, but so far it's only lasted between six and 12 hours. The mission is scheduled for four days while the company tests several parts of the balloon's tech. Their ultimate goal is to send paying customers up in the balloon. So this sandwich is basically a guinea pig or a guinea sandwich. Good luck, chicken sandwich. Be safe up there, and if you see any aliens, run away. They'll want to eat ya. This next story is a gigantic bummer, so get ready. But it's also a cautionary story about dangerous YouTube stunts. A 19-year-old in Minnesota was charged with manslaughter recently after she accidentally shot and killed her boyfriend while filming a YouTube video. The two were making a video in which the boyfriend, Pedro Ruiz, was apparently trying to prove that a book would be enough to stop a bullet. The stunt obviously went terribly wrong. Ruiz died and his girlfriend, Mona Lisa Perez, was arrested after she called police to report it. Obviously, this is a totally tragic and a reminder that no amount of YouTube views is ever worth risking your life over. Please. Be safe. I know we all joke about cinnamon challenges and milk gallon challenges, but like, it's not worth it. Be safe, everybody. The creator of the Oculus Rift is apparently a little bit salty towards his old employer. Upload VR reports that Palmer Lucky has donated $2,000 to a hack called Revive, which allows HTC Vive owners to play VR games that are exclusive to the Rift. A Patreon for the project even included a thank you note to Lucky for his generous donation. It said, I'd like to thank him for his pledge and everything he has done for the VR community as a whole. You might remember that Lucky, who is credited with building the Rift, parted ways with the company in March. And apparently there are still some very hard feelings. This feels like the VR equivalent of like getting dumped by someone and then trying to sleep with their best friend just to get back at them. But you know what? Best of luck, Palmer Lucky. You, you sleep with people. You do your thing. Well, that's all the news we have for you today. And for news from every corner of the internet, even that darkish one over there that's kind of well lit, but not very, remember to like this video and subscribe to the now. Funded by players and, ooh boy, is it not pretty. The creator versus the gaming gamers and inside look at just how often the game is refunded. The game is refunded. Those leaks features, the, Nintendo has allotted 16, fuck, 1600, nope, 160,000. 1,000 top rated, okay.